What's up guys? Uh, thank you again for tuning in and watching my content. Uh, today we're going to continue our conversation with the N-Case M2. So if you saw my last uh, build video, we had transferred it from the Lian Li A3 to this really, really nice case. I've been really enjoying this. But one of the things I had mentioned in that video was that the AIO, the Arctic Freezer 3, was a real pain to get in and installed. And also the tubing is quite thick of the Arctic Freezer 3 and so it was really, really snug, fitting it nicely around the, a uh, the PSU. Um, and so it was kind of honestly making me a little nervous to have a, a liquid cooler in there. And so I wanted to see what the temperatures would look like if I used a normal air CPU cooler. And so let's jump right in. Um, and uh, see what that process was like and we'll talk about thermal. So first we started off by removing the top and side panels and then we removed the side radiator back bracket for the AIO and then we removed the AIO from the CPU and gently used just a little bit of isopropanol just a dab to wipe off the thermal paste that was on the 9800X3D. For the CPU cooler we went with the Peerless Assassin 120 Mini this is uh, highly recommended on the end case build, so that's what I went with. So then we started off by uh, putting in the mounting brackets for the AM4, AM5 of the Peerless Assassin Mini and added some thermal paste. Then we then proceeded to add the CPU cooler and added the fans uh, as intake blowing from right to left. Next, before adding any fans, I really wanted to tidy up some of the wires, so I added some zip ties to the motherboard plate. Um, I zip tied the wires to that to keep them nice and back and prevent them uh, fans from uh, accidentally hitting them. Next, I also wanted to shift the PSU just to give a little bit more clearance of those wires there, as you can see here from pressing against the GPU and again added a few zip ties uh, to keep them nice and aligned. Finally, I was deciding between 140 or 120 Noctua fans, but I ended up deciding to use the 120 Noctua fans just to, you know, make my life easier. And these are the, you know, high RPM Noctua fans. Uh, so I wasn't worried about their ability to dispel the heat as exhaust fans. Finally, I fed the fan splitter into the fan slot. I wish I had done that earlier before the CPU cooler, but I was able to fit it in nicely with some forceps. Then I added a 140 millimeter fan to the side and put in the side bracket. So next we take a look at the CPU thermals. And if you take a look here, first you can see that initially the liquid cooler kind of blew the air cooler out of the park so this was a 47 gigabyte 4k prores video that i processed in handbrake usually i use uh the gpu um, and it's much faster but i wanted to see what the cpu usage when it goes to 100 percent what would the temps look like we see that it goes to 82 degrees Celsius as the average temperature of the CPU um, with the air cooler. However, it was only at 64 degrees for the liquid cooler. However, what I realized was that I actually had conducted this test while it's been really hot and the apartment building in our complex still has not turned on the air conditioning. And so as a result, there was a substantial difference in the ambient temperature. So I redid the experiment under somewhat of a closer ambient temperature to what it was with the air cooler. And as you can see, there was a substantial drop from 82 degrees to 74 degrees. Uh, for the average temperature at 100% usage, uh, processing the same 4K ProRes video file. Although the liquid cooler was far better on the CPU temperatures than the air cooler, the Peerless Assassin 120, you of course always have the option to also try out the Noctua D12L, I think it's called. And uh, however, 
that's also quite pricey up to $100 and it was getting close to AIO range. So I wanted to see something more uh, affordable for uh, consumers. However, given the higher CPU temperatures, I normally don't use CPU for handbrake encoding of 4K videos. I normally use the GPU either of using the M4 Pro of the MacBook Pro or the RTX 5080. Now it gets more interesting when we look at the GPU temperatures and what you can see here when I played some Black Myth Wukong on very high settings at 1440p. This is just one step below of their highest graphical settings. Um, cinematic is their highest. You can see actually there was a six degree difference in the GPU temperature, the average GPU temperature, which was quite interesting to see. I think the addition of the 140 intake fan as well as still having two exhaust fans at the bottom really seem to help the GPU temperatures. And so since I do a lot of GPU heavy related content, I figured I would stick with the air cooler rather than the liquid cooler. I do want to know that I did go into MSI Afterburner, and this is consistent for both the liquid and the air cooler, and had adjusted the system fan curves for the GPU. So I was just playing Black Myth Wukong, and I decided to change the 140 fan on the side from intake to exhaust. And so then now there is three exhaust fans and no intake fans really pushing all the air out. And you'd be surprised with the results. The GPU temperature dropped to a whopping 50 degrees Celsius on average, which was honestly really cool to see. Um, I know there's been work by other people that have shown that the small form factor really benefits from exhaust. So I just wanted to add this in real quick um, before the video got published. So there you have it. That's my experience with air versus liquid cooling of the CPU in the N case M2. Of course, people might have different experiences. I think ideally, if you really wanted to get even more optimal cooling, you could probably do a 240 millimeter AIO uh, with exhaust fans at the bottom. I could barely not fit the Noctua fans, or you could try to put in some slim fans with the 280 millimeter radiator, the Arctic Freezer 3. However, again, like I said, the tubing of the 280 uh, radiator was a bit on the thicker side. It was pressing up against and I really had to get it around things um, to get it to nicely fit and it was just making me a little nervous. I imagine the 240 radiators would probably have a bit thinner tubing and so that probably will be a lot more manageable. Plenty of people do this um, in the end case M2 as well as the Form T1 which is even smaller. So I think that would be a thing to think about as well as you're going um, and building in the end case M2 and you want maybe an AIO uh, because you're doing more CPU heavy work or CPU heavy games. Um, but this is my experience. So I'm gonna stick with the air cooling with the two uh, exhaust fans at the bottom and the 140 intake fan on the side. I really hope you enjoyed this content. Thumbs up if you liked it and feel free to thumbs down if you don't. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions and please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to everybody who has subscribed and until next time, peace.